You better open the door. His cold voice sent a shiver down my spine as I sat with my mom, holding her hands tightly. I'm not going today, mother. He's drunk. I can't leave you alone here. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. I make my way to the bus stop, counting every single step I take. My mother always used to say, if you've ever been stuck in life, just close your eyes and count from 10 to one, and everything will seem all right. It doesn't. But at least I can stop thinking about what happened in the morning, even just for a moment, before going back to repeating every single thing that happened over and over again. As I stand at the bus stop and wait for a ride home, I realize not winning the karate championship is not what makes me feel defeated right now. It began in 2000. My parents' relationship was crumbling and my heartbroken mother met the man who eventually became my stepfather. At first, they were only friends, but my father started accusing my mom of cheating on him with my stepfather. He even refused to accept me as his child and abandoned us. All this made my mother and stepfather get a lot closer, and soon they made it official. At first, it was good. He made her feel things she hadn't felt in a long time. But not long after that, things started going downhill for my mother and the young me. My stepfather started showing his manipulative side. He slowly started cutting my mom's ties with her friends and started making her do everything he wanted the way he wanted it. What hurts me more is that as her child, I had no idea how and when it started. This toxic behavior was so engrossed in our lifestyle that in my mind, everything had been like this for as long as I can remember. The bus is unexpectedly late and it makes me angry that I feel relieved about it. I am not sure if I want to be at home or not right now. I am also not sure if I am trying to count the shops across the street or my increased heartbeats. Eight, seven, six, five, five. Yes, five o'clock. That was what time I woke up today to make sure I didn't miss out on any preparations for the championship. My stepfather still wasn't home from the previous evening, leaving my mother anxious and lonely as I stood by her bed, not knowing how to console her. Where could he be? I thought, even though I knew that I wasn't going to like the answer anyway, and it scared me all the more. Was he out drinking again? What if he comes home while I'm not here and hurts mom? At around six o'clock, we heard a noise coming from outside. It was what I feared the most, the voice of my drunk stepfather, shouting, telling me to open the door. You better open the door. His cold voice sent a shiver down my spine as I sat with my mom, holding her hands tightly. I'm not going today, mother. He's drunk. I can't leave you alone here, I said, unable to let go of her hand. She stared at the floor, looking concerned and scared, struggling to smile. It broke my heart. No, my son, you have to go. She clasped my hand and looked me in the eyes. Promise me you'll go and win the championship. I gulped. For a moment, the world grew quiet. The only thing that I could hear was my mom's increased heartbeats. If you don't go today, I'll not be able to forgive myself or you, she said, looking at me. All right, I'll go, but you have to promise me that you'll take care of yourself. She nodded. And, I continued, do not let him in. I returned to my room and started finishing my packing. The noises from outside had stopped. It was just one of many days when my stepfather came home drunk, looking for an easy victim. I felt helpless that I couldn't be there to make sure he doesn't reach even an inch closer to my mom. 
I felt helpless. Why did the karate championship have to be today? What is the use of winning a karate championship when I can't even protect my own mother from getting hurt? I hesitantly finished my chores and by eight o'clock, I was ready to leave. As I opened the door to leave, thinking he had given up and left us, his hand appeared from nowhere, slamming against the door with all of his weight behind it, forcing his way past me and into the house. His eyes were red and he smelled of booze. I could feel the rage in his expression. I could tell nothing good was about to happen. Before I could blink or even let out the breath I didn't realize I was holding. He charged at me, grabbed me by the hair, and threw me onto the floor. My mother rushed to me. She had always been like this, alone and helpless, but always by my side. She came in between us, blocking his way and causing me to snap out of my fear. Not the fear of being hit, but the fear of breaking. Go, go get out of here, fast! my mother said, almost hissing at me. It reminded me of the rare times my mother would become who she was. A strong, brave woman. Go, win the championship, hurry, she shouted. I realized my legs were shaking and numb, but I got up and ran outside. It was not my will that made me move, but my mother's voice that did. I did not look back or stop crying or pause to catch my breath as I ran down the street to the bus stop. Six, five, four, three. The bus approaches quietly and a buzz from my phone ruthlessly pulls me back to reality. It's a text from mom. How was the competition? She sent. How were you at home? Did you take care of yourself? Did he hurt you? It was good. I make my way to an empty window seat as I type the line. Five, four, three. I step outside the bus and walk in silence. At this point, my mind is starting to taste chaos like no other. I kept counting all the day I have no idea how my mom is right now or what happened after I left. All I know is that I tried to be the good child she had tried so hard to raise, but I failed. I reach home safely. It was my home that's the most unsafe place for me right now. My hands touch the doorknob and my body freezes from fear. Four. Three, two, one. I keep counting, mother. I have counted so much that I lost count of it. I entered the house quietly. My stepfather doesn't seem to be home. I throw my bags on the floor and go straight to my mother's bedroom. She is sleeping with a peaceful expression on her face. I move closer to her, counting. Ten, nine, eight. I pause as her face becomes more and more visible with every step I take. Three, two, one, zero. I fall on my knees staring at her pale skin. Time stops moving for a moment. I cannot count anymore, mom. I just want every woman who is in any sort of toxic relationship to realize that their pain is not theirs alone. It belongs to everyone who loves them and cares about them. Everyone who cherishes every single smile on their face. You know that you don't deserve this and you should remember that nothing good will come of it. If it's not okay for you, then it's going to be worse for your kids. The door is right there. Step out and never look back.